The first movie uh, was inspired by my dad, who used to come to Houghton Lake to tip up town in uh, the winter time, and would come home telling all these stories. His snowmobiles got stolen out of a, off a restaurant parking lot while he was here. I mean, all this stuff, cars fall through ice, blah, blah, blah. All, a lot of the stuff that happened in the first movie actually happened to my dad or somebody he knew or somebody in town at one point or another. I didn't have to fabricate a lot of this stuff. Uh, he, he's a passion for making film. He loves to do this stuff, uh, which is part of the reason I like working with him because he shares, I think, what we all come up here to work with is that, that energy and passion. So the screenplay for Pro Frozen Stupid 2 picked up where the other one left off. It was such a reunion to get Joey and Daba and Kimberly back again. That was absolutely fantastic. And that synergy that those guys have is, is turnkey. Tony is a really good natured man who finds himself in trouble more often than he should, and it's all on him. And the cool thing about Tony is he knows that. He's gonna try to get out of it, and he's gonna do everything he can to, to manipulate uh, the situation so that he can get away with things, but he knows it's on him. And the thing that makes him a redeeming character in my mind is that he loves everybody that he's around. He loves his wife, he loves his buddy Sam, he loves his life. All right, well, I mean, the truck going through the ice was maybe an honest mistake. He probably should have known better since he, you know, has been ice fishing for a good portion of his life, but you give him that one, right? And so, but four of them is just him, you know, thinking he knows better or not caring or honestly, really, for Tony, it's we're gonna go fishing, let's just get out there, you know, and it's, it's, it's about the excitement of the moment rather than planning ahead and, and making sure that everything is safe. He just wants to get out there and go fishing. And, you know, most of the time it's fine, but four times it was not fine. Oh, Sam just wants to be loved. He just wants to, you know, he wants, to, he looks up to Tony. Tony's kind of an idol to him. He's caught this monster fish and they threw a parade for him in the first movie. And, and Sam just thinks he's the bee's knees because of that. Well, in the movie, one of Tony's best friends is Stormy, and she is a, an old childhood chum of his. They, they've they been friends forever. I just think that Tony is fascinated with her and her ability to to blend in and to, to become part of the outdoors. Tony very much loves fishing and uh, she's really, really good at it. And she's been, she was in the original movie, Stormy, and she's been in at least four other movies of mine, and she loves to come play with us. One of the things I was looking forward to most was getting to play Stormy again. I really love this character. I love that she's such a, can I say this, badass? Um, she can do anything that anybody can do out there on the ice, uh, on the water, in the woods. She's just uh, such a, you know, just a, a powerful woman. And, and I also love that she, she's, uh, she hasn't lost any of her femininity. So she likes going out there in style. So her nails are done, her hair is done, her makeup is done. You know, Tony sacrifices uh, his, his place in line to help Stormy get to the beginning of the, the fishing tournament. Stormy sacrifices a lot of things in order to help Tony and to make him feel better and to, to give him a hand with, uh, with the contest as well. They're competitive with each other, very competitive, but they want each other to win too. It's one of those deals where if I can't win, I really hope Stormy does. Dab and I spent a lot of time in this boat together. It was a very small boat, so moving around was hard, and uh, you know, obviously you can see our physical statues are quite different, so the boat had a little lean to the driver's side. I was the driver, if you didn't guess. It's, uh, that thing runs like a top. That was amazing. Uh, you know, when I first saw it, I thought, really? And, and then we started it up and started going, and that thing just took off. I'm not sure what brand it even is. Uh, I made it up that it's a Baskerville Lake Cruiser. You know, if you look that up, there's no such thing. Um, but that's what it is, and it turns out to be quite a precious little boat. But even finding a boat that has no identity, where do you do that? Well, what other town in the whole world would just have a boatyard full of boats, and this one happened to be in the mix of it? Because of the publicity that the resorter uh, gave us, the whole community knew what we were doing. 
and uh, that's really great. And it's not that we need the attention, but what it does is it sends a signal to everybody in this town that something cool is happening. We absolutely cannot make a movie like this without you know, active support from the community. The people here have been fantastic to us, uh, really took good care of us. The camera boat was a pontoon boat and then you had two picture boats, and both of those picture boats were moving up and down, of course, because it's water, and then also you had the camera boat that was moving as well. So the challenges were trying to understand and, and get familiar with that movement, and hopefully it's gonna edit all together here in the studio. Out of all the scenes that I have edited thus far, in this movie. I have to say that one of my favorite has been when the boys are leaving the tournament launch area and they are rushing as fast as they can to a different, hopefully faster boat launch. And when we shot that, it took, I don't know, a half a day and we had multiple different cameras, some, somewhere around the number of seven. We went all through this gamut of different lenses and had so much footage to go through. It was actually one of the more challenging different um, scenes because there was so much footage. There were, I think, four interns on this project and they worked their behinds off. I, I believe they did a, a really nice job. They, they cared, they wanted to do the best they could. They wanted to serve. There, I had a core team that became mentors for the interns too. And so there was this kind of double-sided event where they're doing their job, but they also have to kind of teach how it's really done. And I think that those kids ended up um, really learning a lot from them. I know they do. And what it's really like, this is not a classroom setting, this is a real world. As an editor, it has been super, super rewarding and fun for me to see what we did out in the field, in the pouring rain, in the fog, whatever it was, and how that all came together. There you go. Come on now. Yeah! You're yeah! Sweet. yeah! Catch more fish than Ah, that is some stir skin hutch stuff. Fueled by Mountain Dew. Many fish bites, you got good bait. This, I'm gonna Here's up a little bit that I would like to relate. So if fish bites, you got good bait. I'm a gone fishing, yes, I'm gone fishing, and my baby's gone fishing too. Baby brother about to run me out of my mind, saying, Can I go fishing with you? So I took him on down to the fishing hole. And what do you think that he did do? Pulled a great big catfish out the bottom of the pond And he laughed and he jumped cause he was real gone Big fish bite, if you got good bait I'm a going fishing, yes I'm going fishing And my baby's going fishing too, alright Bravo, take three, Mark. It was a real pleasure to do this and to work with Rich and Amber Elliott and the crew. Uh, I would uh, be happy to do it again. This is one of those projects where you get to tell a fun story and you get to collaborate with with wonderful minds and hearts. And uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to do that, right?